Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. A quick one today with some new arcade cabinets from Tiny Arcade. These are little arcade cabinets that look pretty close to their originals. And we got in two new ones the other day. We previously looked at pole position. Uh, we now have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles here and Burger Time. And we're gonna take a look at how well these work and revisit pole position, I suppose, here as well in just a second. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that these came in free of charge from Tiny Arcade. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what these little arcades are all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. These are fun little stocking stuffers, nothing spectacular. They're made out of plastic, but they all have some really nice decals that largely mirror what the original arcades look like. You got a keychain on them, so you can uh, use them as a keychain if you want. And then they're powered by AAA batteries, and there's a switch here to turn them on and off. Uh, they do have a pretty good power saving mode, so they usually shut down after they've been on for a minute or two if you're not playing with it. So they do seem to preserve the batteries quite nicely. If this is something that you only pick up and play occasionally, I would recommend maybe taking the batteries out so they don't leak, because they are the standard AAA uh, batteries. So we'll get into gameplay in a minute. Now you can also see here that the marquee lights up and we did a shot in the dark here a little bit earlier so you can see what that looks like. So they look cool, you know, they're close to what the original arcades look like. Unfortunately, not all of these play like the original arcades and that's because their controls are so tiny but also because they ported games over specifically for these cabinets. They actually write them for these things and as a result the gameplay doesn't quite match up with what you might remember from the original and in one case here it's a pretty poor translation over from the original arcade. All right, let's take a look now at my favorite game of the mix here, Pole Position. We're gonna give a little gameplay demo now. You can see it boots up super quick. And I'm gonna hit the uh, start button here and get going. And what I like about Pole Position, listen. They, they've maintained a lot of the original sound effects. So this one of the three really has the most authentic kind of sound. Now the screen is, oops, I hit the wrong button there. Uh, the screen is kind of flickering because I think the batteries are dying. I've had this one for a while and my kids like to play with it. And yeah, it's really tough to control, but this game actually does a pretty decent job of replicating to some degree the original. The gameplay looks similar. Um, it's got the same kind of flow to the gameplay where you've got to qualify first for your position on the pole, and I'm not doing very well at that right now. Uh, and then of course you go into the main race. So let's go around the, uh, the rest of the track here. Now you'll remember that the original pole position had a shifter, like a low and a high gear. Uh, this one doesn't have that. Um, so it does its shifting automatically. So it kind of has like an automatic transmission to it. But I want to get through this race or the qualification real quick, because one thing I noticed with the gameplay is that the other cars, when we get to the main race, will um, actually drive into your car. <laughs> so let's let, let's let this thing start up here. And here we go. Now, if I don't do anything, watch what happens. See, like it just drives right into you. I, I don't remember that happening in the arcade version. Maybe I'm incorrect about that, but that was my experience there. And then you get the full race and you can kind of do your thing with it. So, you know, it's a good little port. Again, it's its, its own port for the cabinet, um, but it's the best of the three that we've got there. Uh, let's take a look now at burger time and see how this one plays. All right, so let's begin here with some burger time. And this one's a little bit tougher from a control standpoint because you got this tiny little joystick here that you have to move in four directions. And it doesn't always uh, give you a lot of good tactile feedback here. So it's hard to make the precise controls that this game kind of requires. And everything is super tiny here, as you can see. So it's often hard to see the enemies coming at you. The physics, if you want to call it that, of the pepper here doesn't seem to work like the arcade version looks. I've been playing this arcade game a lot on my Mr. thing upstairs, and so it doesn't quite have that feel that I remembered from the original arcade. But it's still kind of fun. It's a decent port, uh, and I think this kind of port works well for whatever hardware is driving this thing. So, yeah, not perfect, but close to what the arcade was like, and the most challenging thing here is just trying to deal with the very tiny controls. All right, so the last one here, of course, is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Let's boot it up here and see what it looks like. Uh, now, my big complaint with this is that it doesn't actually have the song, the original theme song that the title screen of the game 
had in the arcade. And you can see just how slow everything is working here. Now you saw the four turtles come in, but you can only play as Donald Donatello. And listen to the music, because this is what plays the whole time. It just loops that song over and over again. Um, but you do have a couple of settings here, so you can turn the music off if you want. So at least they have the option to turn that music off if it's not doing it for you. And then one of these buttons actually gets into the gameplay. And what's cool is that they did try to make it kind of like the original arcade. You got that little opening theatrical scene there with the turtles jumping down to save April. We've got all of the original artwork from the arcade cabinet like we mentioned before. Uh, and you can see them kind of going through the motions here. But it's running very slowly. And the gameplay is not much better than the cutscene there. And I think this, this thing is kind of at the limit here. Um, so, again, it's just Donatello, I believe. And I'll try to get you a better view of the screen here. Um, and so this button jumps forward. This one jumps backwards. You've got like a special move here. And you can kind of beat the guys up. And they, they tried their best to get the, the feel of the arcade. And they tried to replicate the levels. But it's just running super slow. And if you were a fan of the arcade game, this is not an emulation of it. Again, it's a port and not a very good one, unfortunately. So it's, I, I would liken it to like the 21st century equivalent of one of those Tiger games. You know, it's, it's got a, a little bit more in the sense that they are using bitmapped graphics, but the gameplay doesn't feel much better than that. Um, so this one's kind of a, a hard pass. And I'm, I'm, my understanding is I haven't played through too much of this because it's so hard to get through the first level, but my understanding is that they only did like the first three levels of the game. So it's not quite what the other ones are in this series. And it's because, you know, this is more of a modern 16-bit arcade game, whereas a lot of the other games they've released in these cabinets are more simple 80s games. So I think uh, from the three that we've looked at here, I really do like the pole position one, honestly. Uh, the Burger Time one is pretty good, but Turtles is definitely one that's just not working for the control scheme here or the hardware driving it. So skip this one, and maybe these two might be a fun gift for the 80s gamer in your life. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Jim Peter, Tom Albrecht, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.